Welcome to episode four of Morning Comes to Comfort. Morning Comes to Comfort. At the Maple House, Holly and Spider are in the kitchen. There is a big pot of boiling water on the stove. Amy May enters. Hi. Is there coffee? Of course. There's always coffee. What are you guys doing? Feeding you savages. Tell me, Amy May, have you ever cooked for an army? No. Would you like to learn? Yes. Do you think I should shower? Spider takes Amy May by the shoulders and turns her so they are face to face. The secrets you are about to learn are not for public knowledge. Okay. You aren't one of those spies from the big cookbook companies, are you? No. Are you sure? It'll be better for you if you admit it now. I'm not. Do you promise? Yes. Swear? Yes. Okay, I think she's ready. Holly takes a bag of red beans and dumps them into the boiling water. First, you boil the beans all day. We'll add some stuff to them later. That's it? No, 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 my darling Amy May. Not by a long shot. What else? Now, we require you to sing us a song. I... I can't sing. Oh, come on. It doesn't have to be good, but don't you think the food will taste better if you sing while it cooks? (laughs) No. (laughs) Please? I was kidding before, but now I really want a song. What song? Sing one of those songs that tells the future. I don't know that one. Surprise us. And Amy May sings. Take me to the forest. I ribbons in my hair. The old man will never find me, but the devil's always there. The devil's always there. The devil's always there. The old man will never find me, but the devil's always there. Katie Lynn sits at her desk at the Chamber of Commerce. Today is the first day she has been early to work in some time. Usually, Franny watches her walk in with those judging eyes. Today, Katie Lynn watches Franny walk in. Hey, Franny. Hey, Katie Lynn. How was your weekend? Good. What did you do? I went to a party and hung out with my friends. Oh, your friends? I suppose you heard about Bob. Oh, yeah, so sad. I wasn't sure if I should come in today, but I thought he would want me here. They're investigating his death, you know. If they find anything suspicious, they'll find out who killed him. He was killed? You tell me. I don't know. What is this? You know, Maggie, the deputy, is the mayor now. She loved Bob. She's going to get to the bottom of things. Good. Me too. And there are going to be a lot of changes around here, too. I just might be running the COC soon. How would you like that? What? And Franny turns to walk out the front door. I'm taking a personal day today. Do you think you can handle things? Frank walks into the sheriff's office, where Maggie is sitting at her desk, just like always. Morning, Sheriff. Morning, Mayor. I wasn't sure if you would be here today. I thought you could use the support. Frank looks at Maggie in a way he never had before. What is that in his eyes? Gratitude? Relief? Love? Thanks, Maggie. I sure could use it. Mm Mm-hmm. Do you want to talk about it? Which part? Any of it. Let's see. Bob died in a funny way that could have been murder, and I don't want to talk about that. I had to cut down Johnny after he hung himself on Main Street, and I don't want to talk about that. My daughter ran away to live with a bunch of freaks, and I especially don't want to talk about that. Just tell me, 
How are you holding up? Hang on. 911, what's your emergency? I'm sorry, the sheriff is indisposed. How can I help you? No, this is an emergency line, Franny. It's not a message service. Well, if you don't have an emergency, I would suggest that you not call 911. <sighs> she hung up on me. Frank looks down at his cell phone, and right on cue, he sees that Franny is calling him. He shrugs and gives Maggie the just-a-minute gesture. He answers, Hey, Franny. Morning Comes to Comfort will return after this important message. Beady beady, beady beady, beady beady. This just in as the war drums beat in Kitty Cat Island. In Albuquerque, New Mexico, Comedy Question Mark takes the town by storm. Every Friday night, Comedy Question Mark has a full hour of sketch, improv, and then they do this weird Russian nesting doll thing where they climb inside of each other's skin. It's really great. 10.30 p.m., only $6. Come over, friends. Go to facebook.com slash comedy mark for more information. Welcome back to Morning Comes to Comfort. Annie Lee stands over her sleeping baby with a landline phone in her hand. It has a really long, curly cord. Hello, you have reached Dr. White. I will be out of comfort for the day. Please feel free to call Dr. Green in Santa Vaca if this is an emergency. You can leave me a message, and I will be back in my office tomorrow. Hey, Doc. This is Annie Lee. I just wanted to ask you about Leanne Kirsten. She hasn't cried all day. She's sleeping now, and she seems okay, but I just don't think she has cried once. Is that normal? Give me a call when you can. Comfort's Diner is located right off the highway. The sign that advertises for it claims the diner to be the last chance to get a meal for the next 150 miles. The longtime residents of Comfort love the diner and hope that nobody buys it and changes it. Frank and Franny sit at a quiet booth in the back. Frank, I have a request to ask of you. What is it? I knew those kids were trouble when they first came to town. Remember that? There were just a few of them at first. Yes. Then I went over there. They were so strange, just not right. A normal, decent person could tell right away. Katie Lynn, she's just so naive. It's like they knew that about her. They could see right inside of her, and they just took her over. You can tell that she's one of them now. It's like some satanic cult. Frank wants to disagree with her, but he is thinking about his own daughter. It's like she's one of them now. It's exactly like Amy May has left him and joined the ranks of an evil cult. What's your request? I know you disagree with me about their allegiance to Satan, but you must know that everything about them is unholy. I know you go to church. I know you know the difference between right and wrong. They are unholy, and their army of sin is spreading outward and onto every decent person's home. Your request, Franny, what is it? I'm telling you! You and Maggie are the law in this town. You're all the law we've ever had, and you're all the law we've ever needed. And you know what I think? No idea. I think you're still all the law this town needs. Franny continues, but Frank isn't really listening to her anymore. He is still stuck on her words. You are still all the law this town needs. She's right. He doesn't like admitting it to himself, but Franny is right. There is an evil presence in the once great town of comfort, and Frank is beginning to believe that he is the only man who can stand up to it. And I'm not saying that Johnny died by their hands, but Johnny and Bob would both still be alive if they had never come here. It's got to be some kind of murder. What's your request, Franny? Let me help you, Frank. He considers how much he might need Franny's help. The phrase, like I need a hole in my head, circles in his thoughts. How are you going to help me? 
I'll do anything you want. Hell, you could deputize me. I'll follow any order you give me. Frank did not expect to hear her say that. I do need some help. We could go up there tonight. You can see everything they're doing from the hill. All we have to do is watch them. They're bound to be doing something illegal. If we got Bob's sniper rifle... I'm not going to shoot anyone. Of course not. But the scope. We could use the scope to see right into the rooms. It would be like we're right in the house with them. They'll do something wrong and, and we'll arrest them. One at a time or all at once. They've got to go. The Constitution of the United States. <laughs> the Constitution of the United States is not in comfort. I'm talking about a higher law. I'm talking about doing the Lord's work. And just like that, Franny's words came right back up out of Frank's mouth. The Lord's work. Morning Comes to Comfort will return after this important message. Idiot Presents presents internationally touring theater and comedy. We are based in Australia and the United States. Visit idiotpresents.com to watch videos and for information about our touring shows. Play Actually, a non-rom-com, has been around the world and our latest show, Love Sick, is making its way around the world now. Come see it at a fringe festival near you, especially if you live in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Winky face. The Torontoist says we make Portlandia-esque sketches and screwball physical comedy. What do you think? Visit idiotpresents.com. Or don't. The hell do we care? This is Katie Huska for Katie Huska, and this message is brought to you against my will. Welcome back to Morning Comes to Comfort. Dr. White sits across from Dr. McGovern in a private office at the Las Cruces Hospital. The two men know each other from medical school and are old friends. It really is great to see you again. Do you ever think about joining us here in the city? Oh, sure. I think about it. But I'm pretty happy out in the sticks of comfort. Scraped knees and sprained ankles. And the occasional murder. About that. I'm sorry about your friend. We gave him a full autopsy, checking specifically for any trace drugs, blood, liver. He wasn't a healthy man, but he wasn't using drugs. His diet was terrible. He wouldn't exercise. I told him. But I know he wasn't using drugs. I needed to know that he wasn't given anything without him knowing it. See for yourself. Just a heart attack. Could have happened any time. You sound disappointed. No, I'm relieved. To be perfectly honest, I'm surprised. Did you know that he was a transsexual? What? We didn't find any drugs in his system, but he was wearing makeup. Oh, transvestite. Yes, I knew about that. What all goes on in that town of yours? Not much, really. People are just fine having a transvestite mayor? We keep to ourselves, mostly. I mean, there are a couple of busybodies, but I suppose every town has that. Evening comes to comfort. Holly, Spider, and Amy May are back in the kitchen. Amy May is stirring something in a mixing bowl. Holly is watching sausages fry in a pan. Spider is chopping several onions on a large cutting board. How do you do that? What? Most people, when they cut onions, they cry, but you... Your makeup is perfect. What do you see? Franny and Frank are parked on the hill overlooking Maple Street. Frank is sitting on the hood of Franny's car, looking through the scope of the sniper rifle. There's a bunch of them. They're all sitting around some guy. It looks like he's reading to them from a computer. Frank raises his rifle a bit. 
Then I see a bedroom, but the curtains are mostly closed. He adjusts the focus on the scope. He holds the rifle like a pro. Okay, I see in the bedroom now. The woman is wearing headphones and playing a guitar. Wait, there's two of them. One has pink hair. He raises the rifle and moves it to the right. And this is the kitchen? It looks like three women are doing some cooking. Frank would never know why he squeezed the trigger. The screams could be heard blocks away. Sweet holy Jesus! Why did you do that? I didn't! I don't know! Oh, give me that! Franny takes the rifle away from Frank. She looks down at the Maple House. She can't tell what is going on. She holds up the rifle and looks through the scope. It was an accident. I didn't mean to. Sweet holy Jesus. Franny adjusts the focus and sees the front door open. She sees Jed carrying a dead body. Tears are streaming from his eyes. She focuses on the body. Half of its head is gone. It's Holly. Thank you for listening to episode four of Morning Comes to Comfort. My name is Aaron Hendren. I wrote this. This episode is copyright 2014 by Egg Murders Productions. This episode's cast included Justino Brokaw, Amy Bork, Evening Star Baron, Joanna Fergal, Kristen Berg, Barbara Geary, Julie Hendren, Jason Witter, Laura Hosek, Frank Green, and Drew Morrison. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you next month for Episode 5.